neural circuits for dopamine and reward and pursuit and motivation largely uh, come from two what we call parallel pathways. And the main one is the so-called mesolimbic reward system. This batch of neurons in the brain that uh, release dopamine when we are headed toward a milestone, when we can sense a win. Contrary to popular belief, it's not that you get a lot of dopamine when you hit a jackpot, it's when you feel like you're on the threshold of a jackpot. Dopamine is increased by uh, certain drugs, cocaine, amphetamine, nicotine, um, by uh, going into an ice bath will increase dopamine 2.5x, almost as much as cocaine, but it's a very long lasting effect without the cardiac issues. So interesting there. So there are behaviors that put us on the threshold of, of a win um, and therefore increase dopamine. But we have what are called top-down mechanisms. Top-down mechanisms are beauty of what it is to be a human being. The, the top-down mechanisms I'm referring to are the prefrontal cortex, areas of the, the brain real estate that sit right behind the forehead, it provides input onto areas of the brain that control things like stress and reward and other features that are what we call kind of vegetative, like the more reflexive. Now, there's a certain friction, I actually call this limbic friction, where let's say you don't wanna get out of bed in the morning. You just don't. Maybe you're tired, but maybe you're just not motivated and you force yourself to get up. What you're doing is you're using top-down control to say, oh, the fatigue I feel, I'm gonna override that fatigue. And much of what's online is how do you override that fatigue, that lack of motivation. And some people say, well, you gotta do it out of love. And then other people say you do it out of anger and it doesn't matter. These top-down mechanisms are very subjective. If you are gonna do it because you really care about the person that you're gonna pick up at the airport and you gotta get up early, well, that's one mechanism. If you're gonna do it because um, you're a person of your word and you said you were gonna be there, you do it. You know, the, the just do it mantra is top-down control. The top-down control is also involved in controlling reflexes. The desire to consume something that isn't good for you, you can resist that desire through top-down control. The more rested you are generally, the easier it is to engage top-down control. So when I look at people um, like David, a bit, he's been to my lab, and um, one of the many important things that David stands for is the ability to override limbic friction, to convince himself to do it anyway. That is top-down control. And what he's done is somehow gotten very familiar with the narrative of experience of friction and the narrative of overriding friction. And he knows that a win is coming later and so what happens is if you know that, that overriding limbic friction is gonna create a win down the line, that win could be a sense of accomplishment, that you conquered something. And what you can do is you can start to thread back that dopamine from the future to the idea by getting out of bed, I'm already starting to experience the win. You can anticipate the win. Now there's actually a paper that was just published on this, points to the fact that delayed gratification is controlled by dopamine. If you know that by delaying gratification, you are going to, um, it's worthwhile, you start to achieve that dopamine increase earlier. So delayed gratification is resisting the, uh, chocolate the bar. urge, resisting the chocolate bar or resisting the staying in bed or whatever it happens to be. But that itself can start to evoke dopamine release. Now, I'm not David Goggins, obviously, I never will be, but the way he describes his process is a little bit different I think than, um, than just pure like, oh, I feel great doing it. He talks a lot of times about how it's very, very challenging for him. But when you talk to people who are very good at overriding limbic friction, you start to get the sense that even if it's very challenging for them to do, that they understand the great reward that's gonna come, to, that's gonna come later. And I think for a lot of people, the challenge is they, don't, they haven't experienced or they can't see the win and, and experience the win. And so it's very hard for them to override limbic friction. Limbic friction, it's like a booming voice throughout your brain and body of stay in bed, sleep is important. I heard on the podcast, sleep is important, stay in bed. And to override that requires an immense amount of what we call willpower, but willpower is top-down control. Anytime we overcome uh, doubt, challenge, uh, internal doubt and challenge, we're engaging these mechanisms. It's a skill and there's neuroplasticity in this circuit. The ability to focus is enhanced by forcing yourself to focus. The ability to sleep is enhanced by getting better at relaxing and turning off thoughts. And the ability to override limbic friction can only be created 
one of two ways. One is to increase your overall levels of alertness through dopamine and norepinephrine. That's why people take Adderall and Ritalin, drink caffeine, smoke nicotine in order to get more alert. They're trying to, they're biologically hacking their way into the system. I think it's beautiful when people can psychologically, I always say, I always imagine scruffing myself and forcing myself into it because for me, it helps to third person myself. What I'm talking about is third personing oneself in service to, uh, to overriding limbic friction. And sometimes we, we have this narrative that's so closely tied to our immediate state that we have a hard time forcing ourselves into some other mode of action. And so it can be very helpful to take on a view of yourself that's living in anticipation of the future state that you're going to be in, like successfully getting out of bed in the morning. I think that if we can start to see these reward systems and top-down control as things that we can modulate in real time you, and use it sparingly. I'm not suggesting people do this for everything, right? It can be very exhausting to scruff yourself into the best action all the time. But look, I mean, people who are recovering from addiction, they, they have to do this. It's a, it's a process from morning till night. One thing that a lot of people um, misperceive is that we should always celebrate our wins. The dopamine system is very good at predicting wins. And when it can predict a win, if those wins come on a regular basis, you start reducing the amount of dopamine that's released in response to those wins. The casino owners understand this. The pattern of reinforcement that works best in animals and humans is intermittent random reinforcement. So one thing that you can do, and I suggest to people, is that if you are working hard at something or you're really pushing yourself, sometimes reward yourself but occasionally delete the reward because it sets up, there's a, something called dopamine reward prediction error. It's a computational analysis of what keeps people and animals motivated to continue to pursue. Look something like this. You're in your 90 minute learning bout or work bout of any kind. You're doing your little gap learning things. And every once in a while, you look at the clock and you go, whoa, I've made it 30 minutes without looking at my phone. You think, okay, that feels pretty good. Other times um, you might, uh, say, you know, okay, I made it to the 45 minute mark. I'm gonna go get myself a nice cup of coffee. So you have a little bit of coffee. Other times you delete the coffee and you keep working. What you're doing is you're effectively taking that goal line and you're moving, you're catching little micro wins, but occasionally you don't take anything. It keeps you in pursuit. Keep it guessing. Keep it guessing. Another way to do this is uh, I suggest people avoid layering dopamine. You know, you have one dopamine system that fortunately can be activated by a lot of different things. So for instance, I love the feeling of being completely rested, going into the gym or going for a run mid-morning after a cup of coffee, hydrating well, using the bathroom, listening to my favorite music on a sunny day. But that's a lot of things layering in for dopamine. And what happens is that if that becomes your hope and expectation, fine. But if that becomes your requirement for actually having a great run or workout, you're in trouble because the next time, you're, it's not gonna be that exciting and you're not gonna be that motivated. You actually won't perform as well. So this year, what I've been doing is every third or fourth workout or so, I think kind of randomly, I leave my phone in the car, I don't use any music, and I don't allow myself any kind of pre-workout stimulant. So I have to generate all the force and energy and everything I'm gonna do from internal processes. How would you do that? It's supposed to be fun. Well, I'll tell you, when the next time when you bring your headphones and you're listening to music, you feel like a god in there. Why? Because you are secreting so much more dopamine, so much more noradrenaline, so much more effective at performance. But then the next time you have to throttle it back.